Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today we are going to be looking at one of Gerber's newest offerings for 2020. This is called the Gerber Armbar Drive. And I got to tell you, I really like this direction that Gerber is going. I like this little compact tool uh, theory that they're going after. And this particular tool, there's a lot of good things about it. There really is. And then there's some other things that are not quite as good. Um, but I think that they are moving in the right direction. One of the things that I really liked about the, the two Gerber drive models is that they weren't trying to do too much. They were focused on making a multi-tool that was geared that's going to have your great driver, a good pair of pliers, and a knife blade, which are the three most important tools in my opinion on any regular plier based multi-tool well with this design they're making this the trying to go after the pocket tool this is kind of competition towards leatherman's latest free t series the t2 and the t4 and while it doesn't have the same number of functions i like how they implemented a lot of things in here let's go over the specs of the armbar drive and then we're going to get into the tools and the functions and I'm going to give you my thoughts on what I think of the new offering from Gerber. I want to say first off that this thing actually comes in four colors, but they were sold out of everything but orange. And so that's why I got orange for both this model and the next model that we're going to be looking at, which is going to be the armbar cork. So they have these in four colors. One is a blue, this orange model. They have an onyx, and then they're going to have a gold version as well. Uh, all the colors are uh, pretty decent looking. They're, they really are. They're not bad. It has the anodized aluminum scale, and that's the only portion of this that's going to have the coloring on it. Now, for overall weight, this is pretty lightweight. It's 90 grams or about 3.2 ounces. Overall length is three and a half inches, and then it is a half inch wide and a half inch wide and a half inch thick. It's actually just slightly under that on the thickness, uh, but it's close enough to half inch that we'll, that's what we'll call it. Uh, that relates to 89 millimeters in length and 13 millimeters in in uh, width and depth. Well, let's get into the tool set. We're gonna start off with the knife blade and Gerber does not specify what this blade is, but my guess is that it's gonna be an 8CR13 MOV is my guess. I don't know that for certain, so don't hold me to that, but from what I've heard, this is going to be 8CR13 MOV. Now, the blade on here is actually really nice. I like this blade. Uh, I like that blade shape. I like that kind of stonewashed finish. Uh, it's just, it's a really good blade, actually. Now, the blade length is going to be 2 and 5 eighths of an inch, or about 66 millimeters, and that is a great EDC knife blade length, in my opinion. So, the blade has actually come out of the factory really sharp. They did a really nice job on that. Uh, you can see that just pristine cut on that paper. No qualms about that whatsoever. The liner lock on here, really solid lock up on it too. Hardly any, if I get any movement, it's just a very touch side to side. But on the whole, this thing is really done well. The, the liner lock engages extremely well. The detent when in its closed position engages incredibly well no movement it's really nice on the fit and finish for that blade now my hands are a little large so i have to choke up on this tool because it's kind of small uh, it is one-handed opening and i can do it but it's a little uncomfortable for me and but for a tool this size i don't mind having to grab it with two hands and open the blade up it's no big deal to me i think that is a great blade design i think it's it's implemented very well on this particular tool the next thing we're going to talk about is a three-in-one tool and then it's here on the end. This is a light duty hammer or a pummel, and it is really implemented well. You'll notice that when it's in its closed position, it engages with the frame too on both sides. So it makes for a really solid contact surface. So for, for light duty hammering tasks, it's gonna do just fine, as well as being uh, grabbed in the center at the pivot point there. Now, when you open it up, you can pivot it back and then it engages on the top side as well so it locks in pretty form firmly it's a it's kind of a slip joint uh, it doesn't have a lock on it per se but it really is firmly on there and it works as a light duty pry tool using it like this and what i really like about this is this is an exceptionally good bottle opener uh, bottle cap lifter 
So you just hook your bottle cap in there and the wide mouth down here on both top and bottom gives you great grip. For those that drink and want to have a, a good uh, bottle cap lifter in their pocket, I think this is even better than the Gerber Dimes. And the Gerber Dime is actually really, really good. But this is just a, one solid hunk of stainless steel there. And it just, I really like this a lot. I like how they implemented that. Now, if we move around, this is where it gets its name. This is the driver for it. It comes with a reversible bit, so it has a number two Phillips and a 3 16 uh, flat driver. has a little magnet down in the bottom of there, uh, much like you get on the center drive. So that works really, really well, and they hold in there exceptionally well, too. And then you can use standard quarter-inch bits. Now, the next tool, and another thing is you can get to each individual tool by themselves so it, it, that, I, that is done really well as well now the all on here i haven't had a chance to use the all because i just picked this i just got this in the mail uh this morning and so i've been messing with it throughout the day and it seems to a lot of good things i have to say about it uh, the all is reminiscent of what they have in their center drive it's a very sharp pointy little all with a reaming surface on it i haven't had a chance to use it but knowing gerber's alls i don't see where that's going to be any issue whatsoever fantastic little all to have on there and you'll notice that because of how the driver kind of balloons out there they really got the longest tool in there they possibly could with that particular all and the next tool well, the last tool on here is a set of scissors so the scissors here's where we're starting to get into where it's not quite so good uh, the scissors are decent they're they're not bad at all one of the qualms that I have about this is that the the spring is not very robust and then it doesn't I don't like the fact that it, it doesn't spring back a little wider open I wish the spring would push it out a little further I think they could have done something just a bit different there it doesn't work bad it's not uncomfortable because it has that little break over and it, it does a decent job we got some doubled up paper here and we'll just run through there real quick. And you can see it does a fine job on the paper. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Pardon me. Have a little bit of cardboard. And here's where it's starting to struggle. This is where uh, it's, it's really kind of tough. And that's pretty thin cardboard, too. So it's not the greatest there. They could have done a better job on these scissors. It really kind of hurts. You can see it's kind of digging in my thumb there pretty hard. So it's... It, they could have done a better job on these scissors. Now, for cutting on, this is 325 paracord, and it does a pretty decent job. Now, I've tried to cut it, you know, up the middle towards the end. They're not going to be on par with what you're going to get with Victorinox scissors, but if you get them down near the fulcrum, they seem to do an okay job, and it's a pretty decent cut. We'll bring in some 550 paracord, and it's pretty much the same thing. I had to hit it a couple times there, but the cut on there is not bad. It's pretty clean. Let's talk about the good things I like about this and then where I think Gerber kind of really missed the mark. So first the good. The knife blade is exceptionally good on this one. Even though it may not be the highest quality steel, I think the knife blade, uh, everything about it, the shape, the lockup, the, just the whole works, the length of it, I think is really, really good and come out of the factory very very sharp they did a really nice job on that the next thing that they did a very fantastic job on was this unit this three in one pry tool bottle cap lifter and hammer i like how this is implemented i really really do i like that when it's in its open position it's locking against the frame when it's in its closed position it's locking against the frame gives you a lot of good solid contact points should be something that is going to last for quite a little while now, here's where we're going to start getting into some of the bad. While I like the driver setup, what I do not like is the fact that the, uh, the slip joint on here is virtually non-existent. I can take this, and I'm just going to set it down here and just put a little light pressure. Well, if I can get that set there. And you can see that I can bend that over with hardly any force whatsoever. Just right out there on the end, it's just terrible lockup just awful and for the driver and for the all that's going to be a huge problem there is really no surface here the the uh, 
the slip joint or the spring back here is bent over, but there's no little break to it, no catch in order to, to seat it in there a little more firmly. It's really a poor implementation of the, of the slip joint, and I, I do not care for that. Now, the fit and finish on here is actually pretty good. While the scissors could definitely stand some improvement, you'll notice that when we pick the scissors up, that little bar there, uh, the little thumb rest, they actually have a cutout in the frame here so that when it sets down, it sets completely flush. I mean, that's really kind of attention to detail in some areas and then lacking in others. If that locked into place, boy, that would make it so, so much better. My last issue with this is that there is no integrated pocket clip. And I truly believe that this is the type of tool that needs a, a little pocket clip. If they would have had that implemented in there, I think this tool would have been so, so, so much better. So I do have some issues with it. Some of the things on here are really, really well done, and then others are a little bit lacking. You know, it's almost like Gerber tried to do too much with this little tool. Uh, personally, I would have liked to have seen another liner lock on a, pair, on a better pair of scissors out here on the other side. Even they had to widen this out another eighth inch to accomplish this, and then move the driver over to the center where it would be encased in both sides, and then they would be able to put a little bit more firmer lock down here for the driver and the awl and bring those scissors out to the other side with a good solid liner lock, or get rid of the awl entirely. I would be completely fine with this tool with this three-in-one down here, the knife blade, the scissors and the driver. I think it would have been phenomenal just like that. I don't even, it wouldn't even bother me if it was all stainless with no anodized aluminum coloring. I would have loved the function over the flash of this one. I think they did it, it's pretty well done and I love the design overall of, in, the, in the direction that they're going, but I think they missed the mark a little bit. Um, now this retails for about forty dollars, and as of yet, it's it's not available through Amazon. But when it does become available, I'll I will update and put links below in the description box, so that you will have a direct link to this tool. I'm going to rate this in probably around a B. I want to say a B, but I think it's going to have to be a B minus because that lockup or 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 non-existent lockup on the driver really really bothers me uh there's going to be times when you have to get onto a driver uh onto a screw head or something and you really got to put some force behind it and i'm just afraid that locking up or, or that slip joint releasing that quickly is just not going to be advantageous at all i do like the fact that you're able to turn it uh, to any degree you want and I wish it had a rest here to lock it in a 90 degree position boy that would have made it even better but uh, you know it, it's a it's a decently designed tool $40 is a little much for it in my opinion uh, I think because it's brand new it's probably going to drop down in price uh, in time I would like to see this in about the $30 to $32 range. I think that would be a good price point for it. I wish it had a pocket clip and I wish that that, that uh, liner lock, or excuse me, that uh, slip joint was stronger and I would definitely bring this up into an A, even though it's a uh, just a seven function tool. But man, it's so light, it's so compact, it's so EDC friendly that this would be an absolute out of the park winner if it did that. As it is now, I'm going to have to leave it at a B minus. I think it's still a good tool. I love the concept, but it's not quite refined enough for my taste. My name's Ben, and you've been watching my review of the Gerber Armbar Drive. Not a bad tool, one I think you should check out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.